I ordered a black walnut board and what I got in the mail surprised me in a very positive way. I expected a board with some beautiful brown colors, but this one also had some really nice figure in it. I will try my best to design some cool wall art sculptures to complement the most interesting wooden pattern. Welcome to a new video. I'm Jonas Olsen from Northern Norway, an artist trying to make a living off of my sculptures since the start of 2023. And I'm both happy and excited to announce that for the first time since I started this journey, I will be adding what I make in this YouTube video in my shop. Since it takes a lot of effort to carve one of these pieces, it is important for me to work with a design I believe in. That is why I decided to make a so-called plan B. I think the whale fin would have ended up looking quite cool, but I think the raven will look really cool, and that is essentially what I'm going for. For over a year now, I have been carving sculptures out of walnut logs, so it's quite a motivational boost to switch it up and make wall art instead out of boards. If I had a larger piece of wood to work with, I would absolutely go for a raven with a wingspan of over a meter. That's about 3 feet for you Americans that uses the wrong measurement units. <coughs> the main focus for this particular piece is going to be making the wings curve as if they are catching some strong wind soaring high up in the sky. The thickness of the wood is 6 cm, which allows me to create a deep 3 dimensional look. I kinda started off my wood carving adventures, making pendants and wooden cups, and I remember back to those times that I did make a few raven pendants. The experience I gained from that will come in handy for this carving, since my focus for the pendants was also to give the wings prominent curves. Now it is time to do some rough carving with my angle grinder. I became curious about how the colors of the wings would end up, so I added some water to the display. I really liked what I saw and it made me want to do my best work possible to honor the beautiful wood I was fortunate enough to work with. I would have loved to know where this black walnut originated from and its backstory, but it is nowhere to be found. I will make sure to ask for this information when I order more material, since I find it super interesting to know about. Perhaps making a sculpture that has close bonds with the origin of the wood would be an interesting thing to do. Just quickly want to mention that if you like what you have seen so far, please consider subscribing. Time to try to make the feathers look like actual feathers. Because of the deep striations of brown colors, I wanted to add just enough grooves so that it would represent feathers and not leaves. I think I managed to achieve this and it's probably a method I will use for future products as well involving feathers. I feel like the wings needed some swirly curly stuff, so I freehanded something resembling that. And I liked what I saw, so I decided to go through with it, and I was kind of hyped about having the right wing swirls twist all the way to the underside of the wing itself. I thought it would be cool to connect my signature to the swirly line going under the wing, and as an interesting side note, I signed this sculpture on February's leap day. Using a belt sander like this made me a bit nervous because I was afraid I would not be able to maintain the correct angle for the surface, but the contrasting colors between the wood types gave me a pretty clear line to follow. I originally planned to only have one of these metal hangers on the raven, but since the large feather at the bottom of the sculpture made the weight a bit uneven, I had to add another one so that the sculpture would hang straight. Here is how it looks before the oil. Man, it will be awesome with that 1 meter wingspan though. I will keep that idea in my mind for the future. Now it is time to apply the oil. And 
and now onto the second sculpture. I thought I would get four sculptures out of the plank, but it seems that it will be three instead. That's not an issue really, since the ones I will make will become larger. And as you can see, there are a few defects in the plank. They are often close to areas with a lot of colors, so it leaves me with a bit of a dilemma. But I decided to play it safe and have the design be at an area without cracks. As you can see, it is some cool looking figure in the wood on the Little Bear's Island, and also a bit on the left side of the sun rays. I have become better now at gluing these logs onto my project, so that they won't fall off halfway into the carving. And here is how it's looking outside of my workshop. The harshest winter is over, but I had many nice skiing trips through it. But you know, I won't lie, it's going to be nice with spring arriving soon. The design on paper will not really give a good idea of how a carving will look once it is completed. With the experience I have gained, this is something I do keep in my mind while designing, and for this project I was particularly focused on how the curves in the sun rays would complement the walnut colors. I'm going to try to give the bear an island looking peaceful somehow. That to me means trying to create a lot of curvy shapes with few straight angles. I don't often think, oh this is exactly how I want it to look when designing. The approach I have instead is that I sketch out a rough shape, then I look at it and try to analyze what works and what doesn't. Often it comes down to the weight of it, and whether one side feels heavier than the other, kind of. Then I add and subtract stuff until it feels right, in a way. With the bear being such an important part of the sculpture, I had to create some sketches of it from different angles. Using references is really good, but when I make these sketches I pick up on important details like the angles of the joints and how the different parts are connected to each other. I'm often nervous when carving the main part, but I never let it get the best of me. I guess this is just how life is sometimes. I want to share that when I carved this bear I had this incredible confidence that I'm going to get it to look the way I want it to look. And it is fascinating and a bit unbelievable for me to see the sped up footage of how I found the shapes bit by bit. I think this is one of the designs I'm the most happy with over the past years. Probably because of the size of the bear I went for, and how the race on the right side stops while the left side goes through the island and continues for a bit. I am applying 4 to 5 coats of oil on my sculptures. The oiling process for this sculpture took about 4 hours. The majority of the time comes down to making sure to wipe off all the excess oil in between the coats. Leaving excess oil will make it look lacquered almost, which is an effect I'm not looking for. Time to reveal the last of the three designs, and oh man, I did kind of feel like I struck gold with this one. I had the block of wood laying close to me when I made the design, because I wanted to look at the size of it and make sure I could use as much wood as possible. And I just showed you the figure on this block. I wasn't completely sure if it would be at the area of the otter, but I think some of it will at least cover its tail. And this sculpture will without a doubt be the largest one of the three. And probably the most challenging as well, because I want the otter's island to have sharp straight angles to create a nice contrast between it and the smooth waves surrounding the otter. That will be a bit tricky to achieve, but I'm going to give it my best try. So ready to carve the last piece of the tree sculptures from the block of wood, and it's going to be very exciting to see this in 3D when I have carved it. Making these wall art pieces has been such a great experience for me that I can with a pretty high certainty say that I will probably make some more of them in my next video, and who knows, maybe the next one after that as well, and so on. And I'm curious, which one of these is your favorite, and why? I have a few designs of larger sculptures I want to make as well, and if I decide to do so, I'm probably going to glue boards together to make a large block of wood. It will be quite a daunting investment for me financially, and the risk of messing up will increase, but I think I'm ready to take that step. 
and it's probably a step in the right direction. It will be cool to have more of this color being at the location of the otter, but I kinda think it ended up really nice looking, being displayed on the large flat surface of the otter's island. By the way, the shape of the island gives me some kind of samurai vibes. And just like that, everything is finished except from the altar. Um, yes, I'm happy with the decision to make these swirls. So now I'm just gonna make some uh, sketches of the altar and then just go for it. And usually it turns out all right. Here are the main sketches I made for the altar and some reference photos. I have a small 500 meter walk in between my home and my workshop. It is kind of nice in the morning because the walk wakes me up and gets me ready for a new day of carving. I'm leaving all the areas I carve thicker than they will end up just as a start so that I can get a grip on the general shape, and I'm saving the head for last. Throughout the working day, it becomes trickier and trickier to overcome challenges as time goes by. So when I carve an important area, like the head, I'm going to do it in the morning when I feel the most ready for it. Then I save sanding and less demanding stuff for the evenings. It is important to clean out the pores of the wood, so that the oil can soak deeper to give it a stronger protection throughout the types. I use a soft brush and sometimes a hard toothbrush, and it seemed to do the trick. And just like that, the otter has been carved, and I'm just gonna say I'm super proud of how it ended up looking. And uh, you can hear the birds sing outside, the spring is soon here, and uh, now it's time to separate it from this log and apply the oil. I look at how the sculpture appears without the oil. I feel like cheating when I make out the combination between otters and elements of the sea, because they go so well together. And this was a crack that had been there from the start. The sculpture is still completely flat on the backside, but I just wanted to make sure nothing would happen to it, so I secured it with a bow tie inlay. The otter, which I had decided to name Myra, is now finished, so let's apply the oil. A special thanks to my patrons for the support. Over on my Patreon page, I share about my random outdoor adventures and also some business stuff. You can also join as a free member, the link is in the description. Now time for the big reveal. Please give a warm welcome to the Raven, Aelia, the Bear, Asher and the Otter, Myra. Thanks for watching, hope to see you again.